2010 was clearly the year of Apple. The company sold, what, a gajillion iPhones and iPads. The Beatles are finally now on iTunes. The stock's up over 50% this year. It's the second largest company by market value in the United States. It's only trailing ExxonMobil. Can it possibly do this again in 2011? Some people think maybe that's the case. Earnings growth is still very strong. The stock looks relatively cheap especially when you factor in the more than $50 billion in cash and securities that they have on their balance sheet. So will Apple stock continue to surge next year? Interestingly, there are several vocal Apple bears out there. I'd want to have a cell phone that works. Ryan Haushauer writes that one thing many Apple fans are pointing to as a reason the stock could climb higher could actually be a negative. With the Verizon iPhone on the horizon, once consumers realize that the problems with the iPhone on AT&T's network isn't actually AT&T's network, but Apple's poorly designed and executed software and hardware architecture, expect to see Apple's market share in mobile devices to take a hit along with its stock price. Smartphones have weak spots. Interesting. I'm not 100% sure I really buy that. Most people I know that have iPhones love them. What they don't like about it is usually some of the network issues, the drop calls and what have you. Will that happen with Verizon as well? Well, you know, that does remain to be seen. Can you hear me now? Wayne Compare also thinks, though, that Apple is due for a pullback. Hmm. One would think that no one would know better about Apple's prospects than Apple's officers, right? Seems that in the past nine months, Apple officers have sold almost 10% of their holdings. Purchases outside of option exercises by insiders during this time, zero. It's a good point. Clearly, you do like it when insiders are buying shares of the company they work for. It certainly is a positive, but there are so many reasons why someone might diversify their portfolio and sell stock of the company they work for, so it's not necessarily a sign of negative things to come. However, finally, Michael Knight says that people always seem to want to think Apple's due for a big pullback, and they inevitably turn out to be wrong. My five-figure contribution has become mid-six figures over the last 10 years, and I have taken at least a third more off the table along the way. I will retire on Apple, and I am not done yet. Well, great news for, uh, for Michael Knight there, that he is able to retire just on Apple. I personally wish that I had followed some of my own advice, which I do not do. I don't own any stocks that I write about for a living. But I wrote about Apple way back in 2002, I believe, when the stock was really beaten down. It was trading below cash value. It's now at 320 and change. Well, there we go. At least I can write about it.